Are you even cooking if you don't throw pasta on the floor? What do you say we make 30 freezer meals today? I already did all the shopping and if you did not get to see my freezer meal grocery haul, I will leave that video down below for you. I put it up just a couple days ago. And today we are going to make 30 freezer meals in just a couple of hours. I am going to be using the freezer meal pack from Eating Together, who were awesome enough to partner with me on today's video. So I've talked about them before. They have a monthly meal plan for only $5 a month, and I will have a link to that down below. However, if you are not into that subscription life and you just want a one and done packet that you can have that's yours and you keep, well, they've got you covered. They have your shopping lists. They have your prep instructions in order. They have printable, meal instructions so you don't forget what to do and recipes that you can keep in a recipe binder for the rest of your life or less if you don't wanna keep it that long. Eating Together is a woman owned company based out of the great state of Texas and they put all of their meals together to feed a family that is quick, that is on a budget. So if you want that freezer meal pack, I do have it linked down below and when you use my link, you're gonna save $5 off of the meal pack. I know, it's amazing. So without further ado, let's make some freezer meals. Prepping for the first meal includes cooking two pounds of ground beef. I have a 12 inch skillet here and a very large pasta pot. Fingers crossed I can fit all four pounds of pasta in there. Okay, that's enough playing around. <laughs> let's uh, let's get back to actually cooking now. Here is where it all comes together. This will be serving a family for four entire meals. make sure to get every last drop of sauce out of there. So I did add a little bit of water inside the jar, shook it around a bit to get just the last little bits. And because this is going to be frozen and reheated later, it's okay to have just a hint of extra liquid. Mix everything together to your satisfaction and then top it with some cheese. And I went a little rogue here because I'm pretty sure the direction said to put the cheese in a bag and top it later, but you know, um, I do what I want around here. I'm now topping it with just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I love the saltiness that it has. And now time for the lids. What I love about this meal pack is that they have cooking instructions that you can then tape onto the completed freezer meals. So you don't forget what you're doing. Serve this meal with a nice fresh salad and dinner is as easy as that. Next up, we are going to make some pulled pork sandwiches. And of course, I mean, we're not making the pulled pork sandwiches. We're freezer prepping the pulled pork sandwiches and we're going to make a dry rub. Don't be afraid of the pepper, guys. So when? Uh, that's good. A glass. By the way, this is a lot of pepper. The people want the pepper. Here are my pork roasts. Woo! And kind of like, do this. You guide me. You guide me. Make sure every little section is covered. And I know you're thinking like that's a ton of seasoning, but these are very, very big hunks of meat and you want your food to taste good. So don't be scared. When it comes to a roast, you can season liberally. And here we're going to take our seasoned roasts and plop it in these Ziploc bags like a so. This didn't stay on this bowl very well, did it? Just like that. And we want to seal these bags right here. Now this meal can be cooked in either the crock pot 
or the Instant Pot, whichever you prefer, you know, because you're gonna cook it for several hours if it's in the crock pot or in the Instant Pot if you wanna do it that way. And then you're gonna shred it for sandwiches, okay? It's time to freeze these. You can freeze your buns with this together like this so everything is together yes you can freeze your buns and then pull them out later i've done it a ton it's totally okay to do so meal number three in the pack is complete i ended up cooking my barbecue shredded pork sandwiches in my instant pot highly recommend i think i set it for an hour and then let it do a natural release for an hour and here's the completed sandwiches we served ours with fruit and cheese and crackers on the side and you gotta have pickles on your pulled pork sandwiches. Are you team sweet or team dill on your pickles? Next up is another throw and go. Easy, easy meal. This should take you less than five minutes to put together. So I have my two beef roasts here that I picked up. These are about three pounds each and these are gonna be beef nacho kits. And these can also be cooked in the crock pot or the instant pot, whichever you prefer. And just like we did with the pork, we're gonna season the outside of these. It's gonna add some flavor. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Oh my goodness. Yes, we got it. Get as much of the air out as possible and we will tape the instructions on the outside so we don't forget what the heck we're doing. I have the instructions and what I like about these is they give you optional items over here to add to the dish or top the dish with. I think that's really thoughtful. And if you're going to gift freezer meals to someone, you might wanna stick that like in a Tupperware to give them the whole thing, but there we go. Completed dish and how fun are these blue corn tortilla chips? I mean, that's a way to really make the nachos sparkle and feel free to add lettuce, tomato, and avocado. Let's go back to our standard pictures, shall we? So this is going to be a veggie stuffed burrito. And once again, it's like a throw and go. <laughs> Roasted tomatoes in each bag. Do you say tomato or tomato? Now let's call the whole thing off. Tomato, tomato, oh let's call the whole thing off. And that's all she wrote. Come on, let go. <laughs> okay. Give it maybe a little, a little massage to stir it around a bit. And let's get all that air out of here. <sighs> oh crap. You know what I forgot? I forgot to put the corn in. Just kidding, open those back up. <laughs> oh my. I have these bags of frozen corn. I'm such a dummy. Canned corn's fine. Also just drain the extra out of it. What is the matter with me? Now get all of the air out. I actually do like to freeze these flat, like on a, on a cookie sheet or something. You know, you kind of go flat like that. Oops, I didn't seal it all the way. <laughs> you lay it flat like this on a cookie sheet and I like to freeze it like that and then they stack really nicely. Here are the completed veggie stuffed burritos. I have my instructions here.
taquitos finished. When it comes time to cook the taquitos, you don't have to thaw them, you put them on a baking sheet just like this with some parchment. And you can tell in this baking sheet, because this is your regular size, how big these are. And you're gonna cook them at 400 degrees until they are done. And here's my tip for you, is get some cooking spray and give them a little spray on the top and they're gonna get super crispy on top. A little, little Christine tip from me to you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Some of my favorite meals to make are the ones where it's like dump everything in a bowl and you're done. So we will make some turkey Asian meatballs. I have some ground chicken and ground turkey in this bowl and the instructions say to only do two pounds, but I did three because I had it in my freezer and I want to use it up. I've never done an Asian style meatball before and I'm sitting here after making them and trying them and I'm thinking that was a really bad life decision because these are amazing super flavorful. I highly recommend you guys end up with this meal pack kit. You are going to love this. I, I would double it, triple it, quadruple it. It's that good. Mix together and shape into meatballs. Oh crap, eggshell. <laughs> I did crack an eggshell in there. Now it's time to mix up the glaze or sauce that goes with these turkey meatballs. And I know I've had a few questions about the rings that I've been wearing. You've probably seen me in a black wedding ring, a white wedding ring, and today it is silver. It is actually a pack of silicone rings that Dave got from Amazon. It was really cheap. It's like $8 for 10 rings or something like that. Because I don't wear my nice diamond wedding ring that often because I work out and I wash my hands all the time in the kitchen and I can't even put on my kitchen gloves to wash my dishes with my diamond wedding ring on. So I've been really enjoying those quite a bit. And there we go, the finished sauce. For the meatballs, I layered the meatballs in the bottom and separated them with a piece of wax paper and put the sauce right here. And the lids are going to go on just like this. And my cooking instructions will be taped right here. And we will cook some rice to go along with these on the day of. You don't need to do that right now. And honestly, I think like some stir fry veggies or some broccoli would go really nicely with this as well. So there we go. There is the Asian turkey meatballs are completed. Here's the finished dish. This was so delicious. I highly recommend these meatballs. The flavor is just outstanding. I'm working on two more meals over here by the stove. I have a sausage, whatever kind you want. You're just gonna brown it and let it cool. Over here in this pan, I have a ground beef. This is going to be a taco kit. So I'm gonna add diced onions. Oh, less a little more. Oops, that'll be fine. Use my handy dandy meat masher. I found this guy at Family Dollar. It wasn't a dollar, it was $2, but it's by Betty Crocker. I thought it was kind of a gimmick until I tried one and I love it. It makes mashing meat such a joy. So much better than using a spatula, like a peasant. While my meat is finishing up, we're almost there, I'm gonna cook my bacon in the oven. And if you've never done that, you really should, because if you're, I mean, if you're only cooking one or two slices, it's not a big deal. But if you need to do a whole pack or two packs or three packs, oven is way to go. About 400 degrees for, I don't know, until your house smells like bacon. I am doing a little bit of multitasking back here because I am sauteing my veggies for my baked potato soup. And then these are the breakfast casserole kits. How easy is this? When it comes time to cook the breakfast casserole kit, just follow the instructions right here. I'm gonna do this in my crock pot like it says. 
This is the completed dish. This was a huge winner. I mean, we are team breakfast for dinner. The taco kit's getting put into little containers. I thought it would be so funny to put the taco shells with the meat and the cheese in this like foil container. What a great idea to make it stackable. And coming up is the completed dish. You can serve it with avocado, sour cream, tomato, whatever your favorite taco toppings are. Hello and welcome to the pitchers. I have my sauteed veggies. here in these, and we're gonna add some suspasses. This is so interesting, because I make baked potato soup a lot, but paprika is not something I have ever put in it. So I find this incredibly fascinating. I'm excited to try it. I hope I don't spill it all over the counter. I can totally see that happening. Don't spill! Oh, I'm spilling. Set these to the side. Now, the instructions say to put the bacon in a different bag and like use it as a garnish. And I say, I like to live dangerously. I also like to live dangerously. Chop up my cooked bacon that I cooked in the oven and we're just gonna dump it in the bags uh, like so because first of all, bacon is yummy. Second of all, it improves every single dish it's in. Okay, why am I using this knife? This is the knife I need. There we go. And in my potato soup recipe, I do indeed simmer the cooked bacon with the potatoes as they cook, and it gives it a little, uh, gives a little uh, je ne sais pas, a little something something, a little treat, background flavor. Okay, I, my measurements were totally off on this. This one has too much. Let's go over there. Make it even. All right, let's see if I can like half and half this. I feel like I'm not gonna do a good job. What if I made a line? A line up, nope. <laughs> Go to your home. Set your pictures to the side and we are going to work on the most crucial part of the potato soup. Are you ready? Peeled diced potatoes, if you please. Russets are my favorite for this kind of soup. So let's get started. I'm still a little eyeballing it, actually. And here's the trick. Since you are going to freeze this, the potatoes need to be submerged because they will turn like black if they're not. So get all those in there. And there is one thing that we don't put in these bags. And I'll show it to you in just a second. And that's the cheese. Those will be separate. So seal these up, get as much air out as possible. And let me show you the whole spread. Here are the completed potato soup containers. And because this recipe was so different than my own, I was skeptical, but I'm not gonna lie, this was delicious. Here is the potato soup. Once it has been cooked, I did mine in the Instant Pot just because it's fast. You add one cup of half and half and all the cheese after you've cooked everything. So this is what it looks like. It's nice and thick. And we're gonna eat this for dinner tonight. Well, goodness, my friends, we have done a lot of good work today. There are a ton of meals here, and I'm sure you're wondering what I am going to do with all of them. Now, of course, you could absolutely save these, stick them all in your freezer and serve your family with them. I mean, that's what it's here for. However, I would like to pose an option. This is what I'm doing with these items. Well, most of them, I am keeping a few, but I reached out to my neighborhood and community and learned a few things. There are two ladies that are pregnant that are having a really hard time and would appreciate a meal. One of my neighbor's mother-in-law just passed. And so now her father-in-law is alone and she thought he would appreciate a few meals for his freezer. Another friend of mine knows someone who just got divorced and is now a single mom who has to work and would also appreciate some meals. I am dispersing most of these to my neighbors, my neighbor's family, local people who happen to need a meal. If you are so inclined to 
spend a couple of hours to put together something like this and serve your community, I think it would be really appreciated. And if you just wanna make everything in a couple of hours and not have to worry about dinners for 30 days, I had a friend do that. She did all of this. She decided, I, you know what, I'm not gonna cook for 30 days and <laughs> did this and for 30 days only ate these meal kits and loved it. And I gotta say, I mean, I've been using the Eating Together recipes for six or seven months now. My family has been huge fans of every recipe that we have tried so far. I'm excited to cook some more next month. If you are interested in this freezer meal pack, it will be available down below. My link will get you $5 off. And don't worry, there is an all new one coming in the spring. So you can pick up this one, you can pick up the next one. Really put together a solid freezer meal planning binder really for your family. And if you don't wanna make this many freezer meals, you could always try out the $5 a month meal planning. It gives you 20 fresh meals and 10 freezer meals every month. That link will be down below as well. Huge thanks to Eating Together for hooking me up with this freezer meal pack, the recipes, the shopping list, all of the instructions. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.